Welcome back, Acron fans, to another exhibition match. This time we're going to be watching a game between J Raccoon and Monkuki. On Kratoria, I am Shadow333, your host, and let us begin. J Raccoon starting in the in the southwest corner of the map, while Monkuki is starting in the northeast corner of the map. And wait, oh, I see they. Well, give it a second. Go with Jericoon, because the apparently the switching didn't quite happen for Monkuki at this point. So yeah, Monkuki is in the northeast corner of the map, and Jericoon is in the southwest corner of the map. Jericoon is going for Grekum, and Monkuki has not yet determined his species or no, there you go. He's going for Vekir. So Monkuki is Vekir, and he will be. I'm not sure what he's gonna do. This is a okay. Kuritoria we haven't seen in a while either, though it hasn't changed since we last saw it. It's I think I've seen it in a few months now. Anyway, main base is northeast and southwest. Right outside of them, there's a small expansion with some nearby and distant crates, or well, except I guess dense and sparse crates. Better way of putting it. Chrono biggest definitive feature of this map: chronoporters and teleporters around the map. Just neutral chronoporters and teleporters that any player can use, provided that. In the case of chronoporters, they have gate tech. Teleporters can be used regardless of your possession of gate tech or chronoporting. Chronoporters, however, require gate tech, Vecchio or human gate tech. Grekum can't use them, though they don't need to. Once Grekum is chronoporting, it's self chronoporting, so it doesn't really matter. But, continuing on, there are observation hubs in the southwest and north, or southeast northwest corners of the map, which, as of the next version of the game, will be capturable. Currently, they aren't, but the next version of the game will integrate the capturability of observation hubs into the main multiplayer scripts, so it's going to be something that's completely available. But that's just something in the interim as a neutral structure there. So ultimately, you will be able to capture these if you have nearby units, and while you have nearby units, you will get vision around them. And that is about it. There are some other neutral structures just littering the map, but they're primarily decorative. They don't actually do anything. They just fill in these holes. They look kind of nice, though. Anyway... Looks like Monkuki is building up. Wait. Hold on. Okay, something went weird. I. We have the three RPs here. I don't know why Monkuki had to build RPs there. That's. That's strange. You shouldn't have had to build those RPs. Hmm. Well, at any rate, the. That's really bizarre. Oh, never mind. I see what happened. He has three RPs here, teleported one of them over to this LC crate, and then he just built a fourth one. That makes sense. Okay, good. Because you should start with three RPs and have 60 LC. That, that's how it should go. Because this map is up to date, so it's not a big deal. Anyway, false alarm. Everything's good. Jericoon, very quickly, moving along. He's got his triad spawning a few octos, spawning a few RPs around the map. As he walks along, it looks like he's probably trying to go towards these teleporters, possibly teleport some Octos straight into Monkuki's base. And... Also spotting a Tethbeer scouting in. Monkuki's Tethbeer is coming in, and that is... Well, it knows that Monkuki is playing... Or sorry, Jericoon is playing Grekum. Monkuki is aware of this. Monkuki is playing Vekir. Jericoon is aware of this. And... Monkuki is sacrificing his units to find out exactly what Jericoon's up to, which he will probably be quite panicked once he figures it out, because that, like I said, these guys are just going north very gradually, setting up shop, getting an Octo in each of these expansions, probably going towards this teleporter pair. Now, bear in mind, the fact that these teleporters are allied means that players do have vision of everything going on around them. Now, of course, most players, if they're going to go near them, they're going to teleport away, so... It's probably not going to be that relevant, but it might come up. Jericoon might be aware before he gets the scouting units in, assuming he's scouting units, sorry, Monkuki, before his scouting units gets in, will be aware of what Jericoon is up to. Jericoon, I should say, won't be giving it away necessarily if he uses that to teleport before Monkuki finds out by way of the Tethvir. But no, the Tethvir does not actually find out. The amount of Octos being built up is a bit of a hint, though, but Monkuki may not be fully aware of exactly what's going on, so Monkuki continuing to build up some. RPs. He's about a minute down from J Raccoon, but he's invest he's saving up a lot of liquid crystal. I'm not sure if he's planning on going for an early depot or No, that wouldn't be right. If he's going for an early depot, he'd build a QP RP. Let's see here. He has no constructions apparently there, but he has found the expansion. He has found the duo here. 
the Sebi Faro pair and has stopped them while Octo's attack is main base, but still, getting rid of that Sebi Faro pair is huge. Now, Jerakun, he's probably not going to move them forward so much, or if he is, he's going to be much more careful about that. See how he handles these two, and it looks like he has not changed their orders one bit. What is going on instead, however, is Octo is coming to distract the Shinbir and Tethbir, try to take them out before they get a chance, and it will succeed in doing so. However, Monkey has gotten the information that he needs in order to stay alive, so he needs to build up some defenses against Octos probably coming in. Well, probably the full try, like a bunch of Octos with Sepi Faro pair coming in and attacking his main base directly using the teleporters. That's likely what's going to happen. So, counter strategy would be building a depot, and then from there he has his foundation, has his QPRP here, building a depot, building Zyme Pulsers, and then from that he will have defenses. Now, of course, there's also Octopods. Octopods are another likely candidate and that is going to mean that there's going to be a lot of damage being dealt from J Raccoon. That's that's likely what's going to happen. So, anyway, with with Monkuki setting up more of an economy just to make sure he gets the Zion Pulsers, I mean, four or five Zion Pulsers will be able to defend against any amount of Octopods that Jerakun is likely to send. He's probably only going to send two Octopods if he actually plans on doing that, and it looks like he's possibly just setting up a near... a nearer base, a more frontal outpost, rather than trying to go for a teleporter rush. He doesn't actually seem to be too keen on moving forward, moving out, and doing anything much more than expanding in this particular base. Whereas Monkuki is definitely worried about this. He's getting... Well, I'm not that worried, actually. He is getting a couple Zion Pulsers, which does indicate to me that he is somewhat worried. But it looks like he is quite likely to be going on the offensive. I mean, he knows that there is Octo Threat coming. But I think he's expecting Octos sooner. I think he expected already be encountering Octos being teleported in. And since that hasn't happened, he's probably not going to be actually going for that. He's probably just going to be building up Zion Pulsers and then going for a counterattack. Not sure if he's aware of where the expansion is, but if he is, that's... Likely where he is going to attack, and that's where he should attack. If he attacks that, it'll totally cripple J-Raccoon, stopping him from being able to do anything. Especially if he doesn't near enough for the unplayable past. But it looks like this Zion Pulsar is actually not going for that. It looks like he was expecting a proxy here in his natural, rather than in the base in between in the northwest. But Octos still are coming rather regularly, so that's something to be concerned about. However, we have seen these Octos really won't do too much damage, ultimately, what's... The concern, like I said, is Octopods. And there they are. A pair of Octopods being built up. Probably will be teleported in. And these Zion Pulses are moving out. Monkuki needs to build more Zion Pulses on defense. He has the resources to do it, but he doesn't have the chrono energy to actually execute those orders. He needs to be focused on building more defensive units. Just building more Zion Pulsers. Possibly another Zion Beer as well to continue expanding. Or continue building economy. But he definitely needs to build more Zion Pulses. We have three Octopods coming in. And an Octo as well. So... A counterattack being set up with Zion Pulsar inside of Monkuki's main base, or Jerakun's main base. Jerakun is taking a fair amount of damage into this base, taking a lot of damage to his RPs. He probably won't go for a defensive teleport on that, though. He probably, if he's going to use the teleporters, will be to attack Monkuki directly. And he's well aware at this point that Monkuki has basically no defenses. He has one Zion Pulsar, which will fall easily to three Octopods. Now, like I said, four or five Zion Pulsars will take out three Octopods without issue. But one, one Zion Pulsar with really, really, really keen deep row heal micromanagement, Monkuki should be able to survive, but even then that'd be very difficult to pull off. Octopods have an instant hit attack, so essentially you have to not let them attack. You can't just dodge into the deep or anything like that. It's As soon as they attack, it hits, so basically the frequency of their attack, that's what you have. In between that, in between each attack, that's the only time you have to tuck your Zion Pulsar into the depot for healing. Now, Monkuki, I think, might actually be going for Chronoporting. I think he's not even bothering with anything else. I think he's just going to go straight for Chronoporting. Yep, building up more Q-Plasma RPs. This is a very likely strategy. Looks like Chronoporting from there, probably going to... Well, Gate Tech, I should say. And then once he gets Gate Tech... I guess Chronoport back the Zion Pulses and then try to get rid of this expansion before it ever becomes a threat. I think this is really early Gate Tech. Okay. Really early gate tech for the last four or five versions, but actually considering earlier Akron, this isn't that early. It's a bit of a throwback in a sense. Of course, I'm only conjecturing. And 257 QP, he needs 57 more QP, which is going to be about 
let's see, about two cycles worth. So about 15 seconds from now, he will be able to get Gate Tech if that is what he's going for. And in the time it takes to research that, he will be able to build up a Chrono Porter, or Slipgate rather. But he doesn't have the defenses against the Octopods coming in, and Gate Tech will soon be researched, will be researched now, if ever. And I don't think Monkey's going to go for it. I think Monkey is just going to divert all these resources in Design Pulsers. I would definitely recommend doing so. I don't see how Gate Tech could possibly work. To get at least three Zion Pulsers on top of the ones you already have. And a foundation is being built. I think this is a Slipgate Foundation. I think this... Though it might be an Aerial Control Center. He might instead be diverting into Shin Pulsers. And he's also spending a ton of money. What is he spending his money on? He is spending his money on... He is diverting into... Zion Pulsar and Zion Turcher, so he's doing the right thing with this. Probably did mean to go for Gate Tech, though, just given his resourcing and given how much money he was stockpiling. I'm guessing that Gate Tech was definitely on the agenda. Now, something to point out here is that Zion Turchers are actually much better tanks than Zion Pulsars are, and it really shouldn't be cloaked. He really should not have the Zion Turcher cloaked. It should be uncloaked. It should be taking the damage from the Octopods so the Zion Pulsars can actually deal the damage back and get rid of those Octopods. And it is actually doing that right now. The Octopods are attacking it because the Faro has revealed it. But at this point, that's not happening. It's jumped back to the depot for repair, as it has this Zion Pulsar. But still, that Zion Turcher is key. That is a tank, and it needs to be taking the damage from the Octopods. Take the heat off the Zion Pulsar. It, is, it has one and a half times as much health. It's, it's a much better target. Let them hit that. It's something that not a lot of people seem to realize, that Zion, because Zion Turchers are, are underused. Let's be honest, no one really uses them compared to Zion Pulsars. But it's something to bear in mind that Zion Turchers have much more health than Zion Pulsars, and their cloaking is much more useful when they're simply a surgical strike force on their own. But paired with Zion Pulsars, they need to be taking the damage. Anyhow, Jay Raccoon has apparently moved... Actually, no, he attacked the Triads. This is an all-or-nothing rush at this point. He does have an Arcticus. He could rebuild somewhat, but it's going to be much slower. If he loses this... Then Monkuki has won this game, and I think Monkuki has in fact won this game. J Raccoon, we're looking at his point of view, he's about 20 seconds down from Monkuki, and Monkuki has enough money to get Gate Tech if he wanted to, so he can actually build Gate Tech right now, get a slip gate, send these units back, and cement the victory if he hasn't already. And he hasn't already, by the way. But he could, if he wanted to, and it's definitely an option. But J Raccoon throwing in the towel, that is game. Pretty short game, but that was how it went down, so I hope you enjoyed that and I will have another one for you shortly, so stay tuned.